Hello, good morning everybody. Good morning. I see a lot of new names in the chat room, so good morning and welcome to all the new people here. And of course I see a lot of familiar names as well, so I'd like to say hi to all my old friends as well. Good Monday morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where it is in your neck of the woods. Neck of the woods is kind of slang for where you live, the area where you live. Neck of the woods. All right. Are you ready to get uh, started? Yeah, I, uh, I shaved. Um, I shaved thinking that the weather would be warmer. And then at the day after I shaved, it snowed. And it's very, very cold again. It was warming up, but now it's very, very cold. I think we have another month of cold weather here in Spokane, Washington. So a little disappointing, a little disappointing. I was ready for spring, but it's not quite here yet. Okay, let's go to the notes. I, <laughs> do, uh, Leo, you're asking, do I still collect comics? I, I don't, I don't collect comics anymore. I did when I was younger, but, but not anymore. Thanks for asking. Uh, no, I've, I've never used that, Aaron. I don't know what the Oracle VM virtual box is. Is that, uh, is that like uh, a VR headset? Okay, I've shared in the chat room, you'll see the link to the class notes. So look for it there. If you click on there and you're on a computer, you'll be able to access these notes in the background back here. Really quickly, I start off the same way, all of these lessons the same way. These links uh, are, the first one is for Zach's contact information. If you have more questions about these classes, please contact Zach at his email right there. And then the next one is the Smart Live page. If you click on these, you can see more information about the Smart Live classes. If you become a subscriber, you have access to all the curriculum, the entire Smart curriculum. So you can see all the lessons and exercises. We have pre-intermediate with Abby, intermediate with Sean, upper intermediate with myself and English for academic purposes with Josh. You can also see the physical location, the actual building school where I work in Spokane, Washington. It's a brand new website, a little uh, easier to use and look at. So go ahead and click on that in the notes. If you haven't joined, our Facebook group yet, please do so. Uh, it's Learn English on Facebook with Smarts. Learn English on Facebook with Smart. That's our Facebook group. And then finally, our channel, our YouTube channel. If you ever want to see any of the old classes, any of the old videos, we have them all archived here on our YouTube channel. Okay, my name is Neil Hulgarth. I'll be your uh, instructor for the next hour. Uh, vocabulary, uh, vocabulary, let's see. Uh, I said neck of the woods. That's right, neck of the woods. What does that mean if I say neck of the woods? Um, it's slang. It's the area in which you live local area and we usually say my or your neck of the woods it means the area in which you live so there's a little bit of slang for you this morning just looking if you ever see me looking off to the side here I'm just looking at your chat uh, these classes are done live so I can see what you type in real time 
Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? Yeah, uh, Nandish, hopefully I answered your question. You can always look on our YouTube channel for all the old lessons. Uh, Milena, thanks for asking about my health. I, uh, I'm, I'm good. I was very busy, very busy last week. Uh, so I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Uh, very, very busy. I was out in the cold weather a lot, being active, being very active. So, ooh, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Uh, what else? Uh, Aaron, I'll make sure to look up that uh, the VM virtual box. I have no idea what that is, so I'm going to check that out after class, of course. Fanny, that sounds good. Renovating your house, painting all day, that will also make you exhausted. Uh, again, once again, in the chat room, there are the notes for today's lesson. If you cl click on that, if you can click on on that. Okay, let's get started. Why not? Why not? Let's get started. You ready? Ready or not, here we go. Uh, today is a grammar lesson, and our grammar lesson is indirect questions and noun clauses. Indirect questions and noun clauses. I will use the presentation, and maybe I'll jump back and forth between the presentation and the class notes. Okay, good. Looks like we are ready. Oh, uh, one last question before we begin. What was that experiment I was doing? I was making beer. I was making beer with a, a couple of my friends. Uh, we homebrew. We make uh, beer from ingredients from scratch. And that's maybe a good thing to put in the notes too. Another slang from scratch slang from scratch means uh, from the most basic ingredients so sometimes people say uh, that they've made a cake from scratch or a pie from scratch well we made beer from scratch from basic ingredients so that's what I was doing this weekend and it takes a long time and it was very, very, very cold when we did it. It's cold here right now. Weather's cold. Okay, let's look at indirect questions and noun clauses. Indirect questions are when we use a question as a noun form in a sentence. This is called a noun clause. So it'll look like a question. It will look like the structure of a question but its function in a sentence is a noun. Let's take a look at some examples. So just a normal question is, do you know my age? Do you know my age? My age is a noun. It has my, which is possessive, and then age, which is a noun. So my age is a noun. It's a little noun phrase. We're just going to call it a noun. Do you know how old I am? How old I am is a noun clause. These noun clauses will begin with a lot of the same words that begin questions. So here we have the question word, how old I am. We wouldn't say how age I am. Here we're going to use the adjective old. How old I am. In a normal question, and I'll show this in the class notes, in a normal question, we would ask, how old am I? We would put the auxiliary before the subject. But we don't do this in a noun clause. So a noun clause, We'll begin with the question word, how, and then that adjective, old, because once again, we can't say how age I am. We never say that. How old. The subject will go before the auxiliary. How old I am. And I had to delete that question mark. I tried to put a question mark. These are not questions. If you don't 
inverts, and invert is where we do put the auxiliary before the subject. If you do not invert, if the subject comes before the auxiliary, it is not a question. And these are called noun clauses. This one takes a place of an object. Do you know? So know is our verb. Usually if a noun follows a verb, it's an object. It's the object of a sentence. Here, this whole noun clause is going to function as the object. So it's a clause, but it functions as just a noun, as just one part of speech. Do you know? And this person's wondering specific information. Do you know how old I am? Now there's a question mark at the end of here, but this question mark is because we've started with an auxiliary. So this shows us, this is our question word here at the beginning, do you know how old I am? I know it seems a little confusing at first, especially if you haven't seen noun clauses, but we'll take a look, a look at a lot of examples. Yeah, I, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I am sleepy, if you're meaning me. Uh, okay, and no, Aaron, I'm not, uh, I'm not 30 years old. That's a good guess. A little older. I'm a little older than, than 30 years old. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Let's take a look at the next example. Could you tell me your birthday? So here's our noun. Again, we've got a possessive. Oh, go back one. We've got a possessive your, and birthday is a noun. So that's our noun. We're going to replace that with a noun clause. Could you tell me, so it begins the same as the last question. Could you tell me, here's a question word, when. When you, because we can't use possessive your, we're going to change it to you, when you were born. Could you tell me when you were born? When you were born is our noun clause. Begins with a question word. You were born. Now there's other ways to ask this. Let's uh, go back here. There's other ways to ask this. I could say another example is could you tell me what year you were born. Could you tell me what year you were born? So there's other ways to ask this type of question. The thing is, we're going to start with a question word, but it's not a question. It's a clause. It's inside a question. The whole sentence is a question but it is a clause, a noun clause. And we call them noun clauses again because they take the place of a noun in a sentence. So, lost? Okay, Nitesh. So, Nitesh, I'm gonna look at your example. You're close, Nitesh. Nitesh's example is do you know how, and you wrote she is good, you would write do you know how good she is? Now if you have an adjective in your noun clause, that's going to come, come after the question word. How good, how old, how long, how far, how much. So it's going to be how good, and then your subject, she is. Aaron, it looks like you have one. Could you tell me where the restroom is? Good. It's a very common noun clause question. Could you tell me where the restroom is? Can you tell me where you are going? Yeah. Milena, that's great. Where you are going. That's perfect. What else do we have? Could you tell me why the president wants to build a wall? Why the president wants to build 
A wall, good, that's a noun clause. No, I couldn't tell you. I don't understand it myself, so I couldn't answer that one. Could you tell me what you're going to do? Let me make this a little bigger, maybe a little easier to see. Could you tell me what you are going to do? Good. Could you tell me how I look? You look marvelous, Vivek. Marvelous. Could you tell me what you meant? What you meant is the noun clause. Good, Rosa. Aaron, I can't write that one. Do you, Zayed, I can write yours. Do you know whether the exam is on Monday or Tuesday? Here we have whether. This noun clause begins with whether. Do you know whether the exam is on Monday or Tuesday? I'm sorry if this if this class is a little too difficult, you can try to watch Abby's class, which will be tomorrow at this same time, or you can watch Sean's class. When is Sean's class? Friday? You can watch Sean, Sean's class on Friday. Good, Nitesh. Can you, and it would be tell me, or maybe let me know. Can you let me know? when you are going to the class. There's our noun clause, when you are going to the class. Do you know why I am happy? I don't, I don't. Diari, why are you happy? Could you tell me why you are so sleepy? Too busy this weekend. I was too busy this weekend. Could you? <laughs> no, Vivek, I can't write that. Okay. Uh, could you give me your books? Yeah. Could you give me your books? Okay, this one, we don't have. We don't have a noun clause, so it'd be could you, maybe, tell me, why, you, won't, give me your books. Remember, inside this question, we're gonna need another question type word. We're gonna need an another question type word. Okay, I see a lot more examples in the chat room, but I have to move on. So here are a lot of good questions to begin with. Let's take a look at another example. Do you know the store's location? The store's location is our noun. The store's location, here we have another possessive article, possessive, then the noun location. Instead of saying that, we're gonna say, do you know where the store is? Do you know where the store is? Beginning with that question word, where? Then our noun, the store, and then our verb, is. Do you know where the store is? So why do we do this? Well, when we use noun clauses as indirect questions, it seems softer or more polite than directly asking for information. So it's a softer way to ask a question, a more polite way. It sounds more polite, at least. So example, here's a direct question. Where is he? Here's indirect. Could you tell me where he is? At least in English, the second question will sound much more polite, much softer than the first one. The direct one, where is he? 
can seem a little impolite, especially if somebody's not expecting you to ask a question. If the question is sudden, it will seem impolite. Where is he? It's much nicer to ask, could you tell me where he is? Direct question, is it nice outside? A little softer, a little more polite. Do you know if it is nice outside? And we can use if. We can use if and whether. And I saw that one of you did use if or whether in your sentence. So not just question words. We can also use words like if and whether. Who is she? Maybe a little too direct. Go softer. Go a little more polite. Try, do you happen to know? who she is. Do you happen to know is a polite way to phrase a question. We're not sure if the person has that information or not. So we're going to ask it in a soft manner, in a polite manner. Do you happen to know who she is? Is it like implicit and explicit? Yeah, this is uh, the indirect question will be more implicit. The direct question is more explicit. So we are going to be implicit. Uh, yeah, here's another example. Could you let me know where I can find you tomorrow? So I'm going to jump back to the class notes. Oh, bring that back. So if I wrote a sentence like this and seven and Duda, I don't know how to say your name, sorry, seven and Duda, if this was our indirect sentence, if this was our indirect sentence, could you let me know where I can find you tomorrow? What would be the direct, what would be the direct sentence? Can anybody tell me if this is my indirect sentence, could you let me know where I can find you tomorrow? What would be the direct? What would be the direct version of that? How can I change this indirect sentence to a direct sentence? Maybe I'll show you an example. Look for the uh, question word. Look for the question word in the noun clause, where, and then we'll use the auxiliary, where can, then the subject, I find you tomorrow. Good. Uh, where can I find you tomorrow? Good, Diari. Aaron, where can I, yeah, where can I find you? Good. Looks like you guys are answering now. So to change between an indirect question and a direct question, look for the question word in the noun clause, if you need to invert an auxiliary or a modal, invert the helping verb, the auxiliary or the modal, where can, and then you can put the subject, I, verb, find, object, you, adverb, tomorrow, where can I find you tomorrow? Vivek, no, no, I can't, I can't put that question up there. Okay. When we use indirect questions, we use the same word order as the positive. There is no inversion in indirect questions. Sean lives in Los Angeles. This is a positive statement, positive statement, just a normal statement type question. Sean lives in Los Angeles. So when we ask the indirect question, do you know where Sean lives? Notice the subject verb order remains the same. Do you know where Sean lives? Let's look at another one. It is 11 a.m. That is a positive, normal, positive statement type question. It is 11 a.m. Do you know what time it is? In my noun clause, beginning with what, the subject verb order remains the same. It is. And of course, I've added the word time because this is a time question. 
11 a.m. Do you know what time it is? Okay, Vivek, I can use that one. I can use that one. Let's go to the bottom here. Okay, go up a smidge, backspace, put it in. Okay, do you know, and this sentence would look like this. Do you know how much you are polite with us? Very polite, right? Now, this, this question is okay in English, Vivek. Uh, we would probably term it like this, though. Do you know how polite you are with us? We don't need that much. What we're asking for is the level of the politeness. So how polite? When we have an adjective like this, like polite, the adjective can directly follow the question word, especially if that question word is how. How old, how long, how far, how big, how polite, how smart. So if this is my indirect question, what would be the normal positive statement? How can I change this just to a normal sentence? How can I change this just to a normal positive statement question? I'll give you a second to think about that. How can I change this to a normal positive statement? Just no question if we just turned it to, yeah, uh, how polite you are with us. Let's see. I don't quite see it is. Yeah, something like you. Yeah, it's very good, Melina. It's very simple. You are polite with us. Yeah, just very, very simple sentence. I saw some questions as to why. Why would we use the indirect form? Uh, when we want to be polite, usually it's better to be polite, especially in a formal situation, or when asking a question from a stranger, uh, somebody you don't know, somebody you haven't talked to before. If it's somebody you know, and they're not expecting a question, uh, maybe you're beginning the conversation, it's good to use an indirect question with authority, like a boss or a teacher, it's better to ask an indirect question, a softer, a more polite question. So ask these questions of strangers, ask them uh, from your friends and family. If they're not expecting you to ask a question, maybe if you're beginning the conversation with that question, and also for teachers and bosses, for authority figures. More examples, she went to the park is a positive statement. She went, do you know, and there's our question word, where she went. The weather will be bad tomorrow. It's a positive statement. Do you know how the weather will be tomorrow? Do you know how the weather will be tomorrow? This question asks, uh, this question asks the condition of the weather, how the weather will be tomorrow if this person was unsure maybe bad maybe good now there's another way to ask that question you could also ask that you could also ask that question do you know how bad 
the weather will be tomorrow. The difference between these two questions here, do you know how the weather will be tomorrow? You're unsure, maybe good, maybe bad. You have no opinion at this point about the weather. If you ask this question, do you know how bad the weather will be tomorrow? You're expecting it to be bad. Maybe it's winter time and the weather has a tendency or there's a repeated pattern of the weather being bad. So it's easy to predict that it will be bad tomorrow, but you're not sure quite how bad, how cold or how snowy or how icy. Yeah, it's more of a negative question. You're already expecting a negative result. Good, Aaron. Aaron, I don't know. I don't know what the time difference is between Korea and the US. Uh, these I don't know. I don't know how many people are watching me right now. I don't have my analytics up. I'm trying to pay attention to the lesson, uh, not the numbers. I should, I should pay attention to the numbers. Okay, let's look at next. Let's keep going. If there is no question word in your question, we use if or whether. So we can use the standard question words. The standard question words are a course of are who, what, where, when, why, and how, but we can also use if or whether. This is usually used for yes or no type questions. If the answer can be a simple yes or no, the noun clause in your indirect question can begin with if or whether. Let's take a look at some examples. Direct question. Is he from Thailand? Now that's a yes or no type question. So if we change that direct question into an indirect question, we're gonna use if or whether. In this case, if, indirect question. Do you know if he is from Thailand? And again, this question is a lot more polite, a lot more polite. Direct question. Is it almost lunchtime? Here's the indirect form, the indirect question. Do you have any idea whether it is lunchtime? More examples. Direct question. Is the car expensive? Indirect question. Could you tell me if the car is expensive? Direct question. Did it rain last night? Indirect question. Do you happen to know if it rained last night? So you can see kind of the difference. If we look at this one, is it almost lunchtime? The indirect question where they used weather. Do you have any idea whether it is lunchtime? We can also ask that. There's another way to ask that. I'm just gonna copy paste. Do you have any idea whether it is lunchtime or not? At the end of the question, if you have weather in your noun clause, you can always put the or not at the end. Okay, does that make sense? Does the if and the weather it looks like we got another example. Direct question, will he answer the phone? Indirect question, do you know if he'll answer the phone? Welcome, Natalia. I guess since we have a, a new person, maybe I should grab the link again to the class notes. Let me grab that link one more time. For those people just joining, I shared the link to the class notes in the chat. Okay. Uh, okay. 
Kathleen, I'm going to use your question. Did you eat your breakfast? This, of course, is a direct question. How can we change this direct question into an indirect question using whether or if? While you're thinking of the answer to that, I'll put up some more examples from you. Do you know if I can stop at the intersection? Do you know if Neil's experiment was successful? Yes. Yes, it was successful. Vivek, I'm looking for a whether or if type question. I'm, I want to know whether you can write a whether or if type question. Yeah, it's right. Do you know if it's cold outside? Yes, that's correct, Diza. Yes, Nitesh, that is also correct. Do you have any idea if she received my gift or not? These are all good sentences. Rosa, that's correct. Do you know if he's coming over tonight or not? Yeah, Diari, that's good. Uh, that's a statement. Um, going back to this one, Diari, you wrote, I wonder if you ate your breakfast. That's actually going to be the direct positive statement. That will be the positive statement. How about, welcome ABM Matrichima. Welcome to all the new students watching. Today we're talking about indirect questions and noun clauses and using noun clauses in indirect questions. Do you know if he has eaten? breakfast and that would be the indirect question good if he has eaten breakfast I have not eaten breakfast and I'm starving and as you can see I don't have my coffee either no coffee no breakfast Whew. okay Let's look at some more. Oh, and sneaky peas, sneaky 33 peas. Do you know whether you had breakfast or not? And breakfast is non count, so I'm going to take off A. Do you know whether you had breakfast or not? Um, Rosa, on yours, uh, and before this, uh, I believe that's Natasha's. So when we use if, we usually don't use or not. In formal English, we usually don't ask if or not. However, on a question like this, when we ha ask these indirect questions, if we separate the if or not, this becomes very common to say in English and even to write in English. Even though it is not formally correct grammar, you'll hear people ask this all the time in these indirect questions. So do you have any idea if she, is re if she has received my gift, gift 
or not? And do you know if he's coming over tonight or not? You'll hear this. You'll hear people say things like this. So it's quite common for people to say things like this, even though it is not formally correct. Okay, uh, I have to keep going. I see a lot more examples I can't get to. You guys are writing excellent sentences though. Uh, the uh, One more thing about the or not. The or not is not necessarily necessary. You don't have to use it. You don't have to use it. It doesn't have to be there, but many, many times it is. I think it is more common in English. It is more common in English uh, to use it at the end of the question, although it's not necessary. If I delete this and just said, if you do you know if he's coming over tonight, that's fine. Do you know if he's coming over tonight or not? That's also fine. It's very common to say both. So say it how you like, how you want to say it. Not by formal rules, but by rules of commonly used English. It's okay to put that or not at the end. Uh, Mason, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, long time no see. It's okay. If you've been away a while, you can always return to these classes. Okay, let's keep going, especially since Leo's talking about shooting the sheriff again. Let's keep going. With the usage of whether, it is common to use or not at the end of the sentence or beside whether. So I just talked about if or not. It is grammatically correct to use or not with the word weather. Is he coming along with us? Do you know whether or not he is coming with us? With weather, you can actually put the or not next to it. Do you know whether or not he is coming with us? Can he swim? Could you tell me whether he can swim or not? So your choice with whether or not you can put it next to whether or you can separate it and put or not at the end. So you have a couple of options. Is it going to snow tomorrow? And again, that's the direct question, indirect form. Have you heard whether it's going to snow tomorrow or not? Does she like dogs? That's the direct question. Here is the indirect form. Could you tell me whether or not she likes dogs? So, again, with the whether or not, your choice. You can put the two words or not next to whether, or you can separate. <laughs> Aaron, it's not a nice sentence, but I'll use it anyway. Do you know whether or not Leo is passed away? And we would say has passed away. Oh my gosh, that's a terrible question. It's a terrible question, Aaron. I don't believe Leo has passed away. I believe he's still alive. Vivek again with the heartbroken questions. Could you tell me whether or not she likes me? I cannot. You must ask her yourself. Uh, Rosa, this is a good question. Rosa's asking a question about how to ask a question. What is the difference between I wonder if and I'm wondering if? What's the difference between I wonder if and I'm wondering if? Well, I wonder if means uh, either right now or all the time. I'm wondering if means I've been thinking about it for a while. Uh, 
Uh, now that's a direct statement. I wonder if it will snow or not. Again, these aren't. This isn't a question. This would be a statement. I wonder if it will snow. Uh, just now, I wonder. Again, a statement. I am wondering if it will snow. Usually shows I have been thinking about it. What are you wondering about? Hmm, I'm wondering if it will snow. Okay, um, so I see there's a lot of questions. So let's look at some basic construction. Let's look at some basic construction here. Um, so if we start with, usually we have started a lot of these with do or could. Do you know? Could you tell me? because we're asking this question from somebody else. So a lot of these indirect questions, a couple of good words to start these indirect questions with are do or could, and then subject, and then verb, subject and then verb. After this, now we're ready for our noun clause. Our noun clause will begin with a question word. So let me take a very basic question word, who. Do you, need, do you know who? And somebody's asking, well, what about future tense? You can have future tense in your noun clause. Do you know who will come to the party tonight? So the question word, now it's a subject question. We haven't talked about that. We haven't talked about subject questions, so maybe mm, I'll leave it for now. Could you tell me where I can catch the bus? After the question word, you don't need to invert. After the question word, it doesn't look like a question. It doesn't have question structure. It has normal sentence structure, meaning subject comes before the verb. So could you tell me where I can catch the bus? After the question word, you're gonna have a normal type sentence. This one though, we haven't quite talked about this. Let's talk about subject questions, subject questions. Maybe finish, finish this lesson before we go to the next. Remember that in subject questions, there is no inversion. The question stays the same in indirect question order. So, okay, this is what I was talking about. Order, word order. What happened? So it's called a subject question, right? Do you remember what happened? The word order doesn't change. The word order will not change. How many people went to the restaurant with you? So we call this a subject question because if you were to answer this question, your answer becomes the subject of the answer. How many people went to the restaurant with you? 13 people went to the restaurant with me. What happened? Well, there was a car crash, or a car crash happened. So your answer will become, uh, your answer will start, the answer will start your sentence. Your answer will be the subject of the sentence. How many people went to the restaurant with you? 13 people went to the restaurant with me. When we change these to indirect questions, could you tell me how many people went to the restaurant with you? The order of the question does not change. The order does not change. As we have stated above, one way to use noun clauses is in indirect questions. It is also important to understand that noun clauses can be used anywhere a noun can be found in a sentence. 
Okay, so now it's going to change a little bit. This is true for subjects, objects of verbs, objects of prepositions, subject complements, etc. Anywhere in a sentence you have a noun, you can have a noun clause. For example, how old I am is none of your business. How old I am is none of your business. This is noun clause as a subject. I hate you because of where you work. This is noun clause as object of preposition. Follows the preposition of, starts with a question word, then subject verb. I didn't notice whether John came to class or not. Noun clause as the object of the, ver of the verb notice. Whether the apartment includes heat or not is what I want to ask the landlord. Noun clause is both the subject and as the complement. What follows the be verb is. Where I live is too dangerous to walk alone late. Noun clause is a subject. You're eating what I ate last night. And that would be object of the verb eat. Okay, so this is brand new. At the end, we have all these examples. This is noun clause as a noun. Nouns in a sentence, you can have them in four places. You can have noun clauses in four places, or just basic nouns. Subjects, uh, objects of verbs, objects of prepositions, subjects, complements. So here is a sentence with two noun clauses. The first one is the subject. The second one is what we call a subject complement. Subject complement is just a noun that follows the be verb. And because our verb is be, it's is, we call it a subject complement. I want what you want. I want what you want. This is just a noun clause as object of verb. I'm thinking of where we will go on our next vacation. And this is object of preposition. Following the preposition of, we have a noun clause. So this is true for any noun in a sentence. Nouns can be subjects in a sentence, objects of verbs, objects of prepositions, and subject complements. Because noun clauses are nouns, Noun clauses can also be in any of these locations. When we were looking at some of these noun clauses used in indirect questions, we're looking at them as the object of the verb. Well, do you know where the train will stop. Follows the verb no, therefore it is the object of the verb no. So these noun clauses are taking the place of a noun. Noun clauses take the place of the noun. They begin with a question word, or, whether, or, if, and then after that, you will have normal sentence construction, no inversion. Let's see. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to look at the chat room. 
A complement. Okay, that's a good question. What does it mean, complement? In grammar, in writing your sentences, it, a complement is a word that follows the be verb. So anytime you have a be verb, which of course would be is, am, are, were, was, anytime you have a be verb, the noun or adjective after is called a complement. So let's look at some easy examples. He is tall. This is called a complement. It describes the subject. It's an adjective, of course. It describes the subject and it comes after the be verb. He is a teacher. Describes the subject comes after the be verb. This is a noun, of course. So a complement follows a be verb. It describes the subject, and it can be either an adjective or a noun. He is who I need to talk to. So here's a noun clause. Describes the subject, follows the be verb. So complements can also be noun clauses, noun clauses. In the last question, Rosa, what's the last question? Do you know where the train will stop? Why is there no inversion here? Where, where will the train stop? Uh, let's see, could I invert that? Do you know where will the train stop. Uh, I think both of these are okay. Do you know where will the train stop? Where the train will stop? I guess I put it here because we have this verb stop goes with train. Goes with train. So my tendency is to move that modal will to the verb that it's helping. I'm putting it next to the verb it's helping. So will is not necessarily going with location, but this action at the end of the st sentence. And again, remember in noun clauses, in indirect questions, we don't necessarily need inversion. You don't need inversion. So when you were giving me examples like Vivek's very romantic example here, can I tell you how much I love you? And very polite, very polite Vivek. It sounds like you guys can use this naturally. It sounds like you're using this naturally, even if you're unsure of all the rules. Looks like you can use it instinctively, naturally, probably because these are so common. These are so common. It's very common to use indirect questions, and it's actually common to use noun clauses as well. But unfortunately, that brings us to the end of our lesson today. That is the end of our lesson today. For those of you, let me go back to this, who have subscribed to the class, please try the exercise. The exercise is on the SMART page. It's English 125. We did grammar 11-2, indirect questions. There is an exercise attached. I will send out an email reminding you of this assignment. Please do this assignment so I can grade it. And keep practicing these indirect questions. Keep practicing noun clauses. And maybe uh, next Monday, 
when we get started, you can chat to me in either indirect questions or now noun clauses, but we will have a brand new lesson next time. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. There's the notes to the class one more time in the chat room. I will see you in one week's time. Uh, this week, of course, Abby will still teach, Josh will still teach, and Sean will still teach. So show up to as many classes as you can. It was great having you all here, and now I'm going to get some breakfast and coffee. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. It's another busy week for me, so you'll see me again tired next week. All right. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class with things like homework and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.